If you're using Flask SQL Alchemy and you want a better way to manage your models, meaning you keep your models and your database synced in the best way, then Flask Migrate might be for you. So what Flask Migrate does is it basically takes the models that you define in your file, compares them to the database, and generates new files that have instructions on how to generate the database at that current state. And what this does is it creates a history of your database over time. So as you add more tables and as you modify those tables, you'll have more migrations files that represent what has happened in the past. So this makes it easy to manage the database, makes it easy to understand how the database has evolved, and it makes it easy to undo any changes that have happened because you can clearly see the difference between each state of the database. So I think this is a little hard to explain. So of course, I'm going to show you an example. So to begin, I just want to show you the code that I have right now. I have two models, user and channel, and I commented out some code that generates a mini to mini relationship. And the reason why I did that is because I want to show you what happens when I run the migration. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create the user and channel tables in the database with the migrations. And then I'm going to uncomment the other table and then create that so we can see what happens in different versions of the database. So to start, I'll install Flask Migrate. So pip install Flask Migrate. And then once I do that at the top of the file, I'll just import migrate from Flask underscore migrate. So capital M when you're importing migrate. And then I can instantiate the migrate object. So uh, migrate, I have to pass an app first and then the DB object. So I need to put it under DB equals seek alchemy app. And now that I have this, I'll run Flask DB init. When I instantiate migrate, I get access to some commands in the Flask CLI, the first of which is Flask DB init. So anything Flask DB is Flask migrate. So I'm initializing the migration system basically with Flask DB init. So what I see over here is a folder that was created and I have some files in this folder. I have an alimic.ini, which is just some configuration. I have an env.py, which is a script to kind of run everything. I have this script.py.mako, which is just a template for the migrations themselves. And then I have a readme, which doesn't really contain anything. And then finally, I have this versions directory, which is empty, but we'll see it have something in a moment. So now that I have that, I want to create my first migration file. So to do that, I'm going to run the command flask db migrate. And now if we look in the versions folder, we have something there. So we have this file, I'll open it. And if we take a look at it, uh, other than the imports, we have two interesting things in here. So we have a function called upgrade and a function called downgrade. So in the upgrade, we have all the things that we're adding to the database. So in this case, I'm creating a new table called channel and also a table called user. And you can see all the columns that I have there on each one of the tables and it matches what I have in my models. So basically what happens is Flask Migrate looks at my models and compares it to my database, which doesn't exist, meaning the models haven't been created anywhere. So it's going to create everything that is represented in the models. So I'm creating a channel table from the channel model, a user table from the user model. And then you can see the columns there that match with the fields in the models. Then I also I have this downgrade, which is just the opposite of upgrade. So I'm creating two tables here, channel and user. And then in the downgrade, I'm dropping two tables, user and channel. And this is because you want to have the ability to not only create something from this migration file, but if you make a mistake or you just decide you want to go back, you can undo everything. So downgrade should be the opposite or the inverse of upgrade. So you can get to a previous state of your database. So now that I have this, what I want to do is I want to actually run this upgrade so I can do flat Flask DB upgrade. And if you look closely on the left, you see db.sqlite was created, meaning my database was created because it wasn't there before. And then if I open up my database, I can see it exists. It has my channel table and my user table. It also has a table called Alembic version. And this is just to keep track of the version of the database. So that is what Flask Migrate uses internally to know exactly what version the database is. So I'll close that migration file. And then what I'll do is I'll uncomment everything having to do with the mini to mini relationship. So I'll uncomment the following on the user model and I'll uncomment this user channel table. And just know the following part doesn't actually do anything when it comes to migrate because it's not uh, an actual yield that gets mapped to a database column. It's a helper field for Flask SQL Alchemy. But if we look at the migration file now after running Flask DB migrate, we can see in the upgrade section, we have another operation to create a table and then it has the columns and the constraints on it that match the model that I defined. And then we also have the downgrade. So I'll run Flask DB upgrade and then take a look at my database again. And we see I have four tables now instead of three. So the three tables that I have defined and of course the Olympic version table that I mentioned before. If you've made it this far in the video, you're probably building an app with a data model. So to help you, I've created this data model design checklist. 
And basically it's a list of questions that you can answer. And by answering them and going through all of them, you'll be able to create a better data model. So I've covered all the things that I think are important to a data model. And if you just go through these, I think your data model will be much better than it is now. So if you go to prettyprintit.com slash data model checklist, you can get this, or you can just click on the link in the description below and you can go to the same place. Now back to the video. So now what I want to do is I want to add another column. So I'm going to add a column called date created, and I'm going to make this a db.datetime. So I'll run flask db migrate, and I'll open up the migrations file that was generated. And we see I have add column for date created. So one thing you have to know is if you're using SQLite, dropping columns isn't as easy as adding them to a table. So so if you go to the Alembic documentation, you can find something that will allow you to drop a column from a SQLite table. And just know that Alembic is what Flask Migrate is built on top of. Like remember that Alembic version of the database. So you can go to the Alembic documentation and find this batch operations section. And then you can just copy the example they have here and paste it into your downgrade. And then because it's a with statement, just indent the two operations and then just copy your information over to the batch. So I don't have an add column, so I'll remove that, but I do have a drop column. So I want to drop the date created. Once I do that, I can remove it. So one thing to note about migrations files is they're just a guess. They're not always perfect. So you always want to take a look at your migrations file if you feel like you've done something that may not have been detected correctly or used correctly. And I recommend that you practice with Flask Migrate before you work on any real projects or any big projects because you don't want to run into these little issues with your project and it kind of messes everything up with your migrations file. So just mess around with the really basic operations. Just think of some things that you will want to do. Basically, with SQLite, this is one of the major issues. With other databases, it tends to guess correctly. So with like a Postgres database or a MySQL database, you wouldn't have to do anything like this. You can just leave it as is and it will work perfectly fine. But since I'm using a SQLite database in this example, I have to do the batch operation here. So what I'll do is I'll do DB upgrade and I can take a look at my database again. And if you look closely, you can see that I have this date created column on my channel now. And now what I'll do is I'll do flask DB downgrade and this will remove that column since I'm going backwards. So if I take a look at my database again, we see that date created is no longer on channel. And because I decided to downgrade, what I can do is I can remove the column and I can delete the file. So I'll go ahead and delete this file and then I'll remove the date created field from the channel model. And then it will be like, I never did that in the first place. So let's just pretend I messed up there and I wanna take a different path and I can just get started again. I can create a new column, do another upgrade, do another migration and then do another upgrade. So that's all I want to show you in this video for Flask Migrate. Like I said, you want to practice with this and as you do, you'll get more comfortable using it.